So you lift your Jeep and you add new shocks and you add new springs and you add brake line extensions or extended brake lines. Either way, you're giving everything room to move because of the new lift that you put on your Jeep so that you could get bigger tires, so that you could go off road and do whatever you want and climb rocks and articulate and do all the stuff that everybody goes out there and does and that you dream of until you get your, until you got your lift and now you can do this and the first time you go out you climb up on a rock and suddenly all your lights go off and you're on your dash and you get ABS and, and it's crazy you're like what the heck went wrong well what people don't think about is this is your ABS wheel speed sensor Okay, and what people don't think about is extending these, okay, because they're attached and they are plugged in and are held in place for a stock Jeep, enough for that stock Jeep suspension to flex. So what we're going to do is we're going to go through <clears throat> what I've already done on my Jeep is you can buy these stock ones for 20 bucks um, at, at, at your local parts store or on Amazon or wherever you can, you can you can purchase them okay and you can get this wire cover that's going to protect the joint that you're going to make as well so what I did was I ordered one you know it's maybe 24 inches long and I cut it into four sections of six inches and I spliced that six inch section into my existing wheel speed sensor I did it on the front and the back and I never had a problem it's two wide there's two wires in here you, you, you cut this and you splice in new wire that's all that's all you have to do it's just that simple. I have a bunch of wire, so I'm not gonna cut up all these wheel speed sensors to show you. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut up this one, and then I'm going to add wire that I have over there on my spools of wire, and I'm going to use these solder shrink wrap connectors that I use all the time because they're fantastic instead of just twisting the wire and putting some electrical tape on it which is really old school or getting a soldering gun out which I've done before or any number of different things and then adding heat shrink to that so that the wire is completely covered the joint is completely covered it's waterproof and all that stuff so there's a lot of different things you can do and then these then these things came out which does all of that it's got the solder in the middle it's got the heat shrink with a protective band around the outside. You stick it on the wire, you hit, your, hit it with your heat, heat gun, and boom, you've got, so, you've got it soldered and heat shrinked together, waterproof all at the same time. So they're perfect. So let's do this. Just gonna cut it right here. There you can see the two wires. Get whatever device that you think you need to use to get the outer sheathing off. I'm just going to use my knife. you won't want to do is you don't want to cut into the wires that we're going to be splicing. Okay, so just cut that sheathing off, set it aside, and you got two wires. 
black and white. Not difficult to figure out. Okay, now we need to do that exact same process with this side over here. So you make your cut around it, twist, pull it off, and that's it. Okay. So now you've got <clears throat> these two wires that don't want to cooperate. Grab your wire strippers. Get yourself a little bit of wire showing. Okay, a little bit of wire showing there. A little bit of wire showing there. I do things the way I do things. There are probably 50 other ways to be able to do this. And I'm sure when I put this up, people will tell me all about the different ways that I can do this. They always do. But you know what? That's why I say I do things the way I do things. And you can take what I, how I do things and use what I, how I do it. Or you can take what I do, watch what I do, and then do it whatever way you want to do it. That doesn't make any difference. Because whatever I'm doing here is going to help you. Either help you because you're doing it exactly the same way I'm doing it, or help you to figure out a better way to do it. So, there we go. I'll use yellow and blue. Okay, yellow and blue. We'll make yellow white. And we'll make blue go to the black. So you do the same thing with, with these wires. Take your strippers, get the right gauge, and strip some wire off. Strip some coating off. Easy peasy. Really the only reason, I mean, this is such common sense and very, very simple to do. And people just have to understand that it is simple to do. And like I said, I did this to mine probably four years ago. Never had a code throw. Never had my ABS lights. Never had that go off. Unless my unless there was something else wrong. So enough of me rambling. Now you have to just the hardest thing is picking the correct connector for these. So let's twist these wires so that they're nice and tight so they don't all come apart. have demonstrated the whole process with these solder solder shrink wrap connectors in other videos so we're going to do maybe we may be doing this because what happens is this wire is much t bigger than the other wire so let's try to work this on here first since the other one slides on pretty simply there we go now it's in there now we're just going to put the slide the other one in so that it goes through so now they're both, the wires are both actually touching. <laughs> both actually touching so that when the solder hits, it goes into both of the wires. Okay, so now let's do the blue one at the same time. That way I can connect them at the same time and I'm not heating 
them up twice, I'm only heating them up once. So it does look like one side is actually a little, little, little bit bigger of an opening on one side than it is on the other side. So you can take that into consideration. Now I can get the heat gun and heat them up. And the solder melt. So the solder is melted. So they are permanently attached now. Pulling them off. So, there you go. That's all you have to do. Now I'm going to take some of this heat shrink. I'm going to cut it in half so I have some for the other side as well. I think, I think that might be my last strip. So, let's cut this in half and use it on both sides. That way I can feed it through here and we won't have a, you won't see it at all. There you go. Now you got a good tight connection soldered on the inside and heat shrunk so that's this is protecting the wire as well and we're still going to put this on it put this on it right just like this and we're going to take a zip tie we're going to zip tie around this so it stays in place protecting this again in another spot so there we have that okay Let's do this other side, since we've got this one secured initially. both of those done. I did them both differently. This side I did them both exactly at the same time. This side I did them one at a time just to show it doesn't make any difference. And also what doesn't make any difference is the fact if you use another set of shrink wrap like we did over here on this side or if you just use a, a piece of electrical tape And wrap it around the new joint. Okay. Just take your electrical tape, go at an angle, put the two wires together, and just wrap the joint so that it's additionally protected. Okay. Either way is fine. It's protected both ways. Protected by another another heat shrink, part of heat shrink tube, or protected again by electrical tape. Because in the end, what we're going to do is we're going to take this right here, again, put that in half. We are going to put it over the top of the joint so that it is protected again 
Okay. And then we are going to zip tie it in place so that it doesn't move and it's protected. Crank that down, cut the end off, crank this side down. There you go. Duplicate that on this side right here. And we'll have both both of them finished. And you have a soldered, heat shrunk, waterproof connection. That is protected again by wire loom plastic connector or protect pr protector and then that wire loom surround is zip tied on tightly there you go so now we have extended the ABS wheel sensor by this much. And it took us just a few minutes to do. You just extended it by however long you want to extend it by. This one was extended by 10 inches. So that's a 10 inch extension that you don't have to worry about now when your brake lines get tight or your shock extends fully you know that your ABS line is not going to be it's still going to have slack in it so it's not going to be breaking okay it's really just that simple it took me what maybe 10 minutes to do that and now you just need to go out put your old sensor back on where you took it off from because it's just a just unplug it from the main wiring harness right here and then un unclip it from where it clips into the shock mount and then down further it just clips around wires and it clips and it sits sits in but if you've already got this off then you know how to do it now I'm just rambling now I'm just taking up airspace but that was the process simple easy and like I said I've done it to mine. I'll put some pictures in right, right. I'll put some pictures in right here where you can see where mine is, has this, and it's elongated. It's it's extended, and I haven't had a problem in years. I never had a I never had my ABS line break. The reason I did it is because I broke an ABS line. <laughs> and then what you need to do is you need to feed them around. What I did was I I, I attached mine to the brake line so when the brake line moves so does the so does the abs line the abs line moves too it just happens that my abs line has more length than the brake lines but i hope you like this i hope you hit the button down in the down in the corner to subscribe get some notifications see what else i've got coming up and with that hope you guys have a great day and I'll see you in the next time I come up with something that I think everybody needs to know about.